By the time this video goes live, True Colors will have officially aired. So I no longer feel the need to make another long disclaimer talking about how, yes, I am going to be speaking to the events that transpire in the Season 2 finale of Amphibia, True Colors. A lot of us, I believed, thought Marcy had secrets. A lot of us thought that she knew more than she was letting on, and that we were going to be somewhat devastated when we found out what she was hiding. But I don't think a lot of us expected this. True Colors is admittedly a slightly awkward episode. While it is one of the best episodes in Season 2 of the show, I would not go so far as to call it THE best episode in the show. It suffers under the burden of trying to fit in too many different storylines. It has to wrap up all these loose threads that have been woven throughout Season 2. You have... Polly finally getting her legs, you have Frobo and the ancient civilization we saw back early in the season. It's a lot. And at times it can get a little distracting. However, the best stuff in the episode, the Marcy storyline, is arguably the best thing the show has ever done. This material is just utterly devastating. We know the truth about Marcy, and it's both sadder and more disturbing than I think a lot of us anticipated. Yes, Marcy has been manipulated, but this does not necessarily mean that she is innocent. We learn right at the start of the episode that she took the Calamity Box for a present for Anne, and then she and Sash had Anne steal it, knowing the box would transport them to another world. Admittedly, she wasn't certain about this, but she had heard it had the possibility to transport people to other worlds, and she wanted it to do this. We learn later in the episode that she wants this so badly because her parents are forcing her to move away from her friends. Now, on the surface, this might not sound too bad, but considering she's at the very fragile and vulnerable age of 13, and considering how she's been friends with Anne and Sasha since they were all extremely young, and considering how Marcy is really only tethered to the real physical world by her friends, especially on Earth, her reaction isn't that strange or even necessarily overblown when you look at things from her point of view. Anne and Sasha have not been perfect friends to Marcy, but they have at least been somewhat supportive of her, which is not something Marcy can say of a lot of other people. While we do not know specifically how bad Marcy's life was back on Earth, it's reasonable to assume that it wasn't great Considering that she gets so obsessed with escapism, in terms of always relying on her video games and other kinds of games, like Creatures and Caverns, to the extent that she ends up endangering her physical well-being, it's not unreasonable to assume that her life was not the best, and that she wanted to escape from it. It's hardly bearable even with her friend's help, and trying to survive without them seems to Marcy a nightmare of apocalyptic proportions. Thus, she grows interested in the music box. She has suspicions about its powers, and she turns out to be right. And what's the first place she sees when she touches down in this strange new world? Newtopia, this gleaming city, as Anne calls it, it's a real city city. All steeped in ancient mystery and wonder. More importantly, Marcy matters here. Emotionally and intellectually, she was stifled on Earth. She's clearly very smart, as we see by her grades, but she doesn't have any real means through which to channel her intellect. 
She's just kind of stuck there, being this awkward nerd. It's not unreasonable to think that a lot of people make fun of her. I mean, even Anne, her best friend in the world, calls her the clumsiest person she's ever known. Marcy rose quickly in Amphibia. She became a leading member of the Newtopian Royal Guard. For most of her time in Amphibia, it seems like the most wonderful place she's ever known. Admittedly, by the time she has to reveal the truth to Anne and Sasha, things have changed significantly. Andreas has betrayed her, revealing that he just used her in order to get the gems so that he can take over other worlds. Considering the danger this places them all in, Marcy knows they're not predisposed to see Amphibia in a positive light at this moment, and thus they're not predisposed to be forgiving of her for what she did, so she tries her best to convince them, to persuade them. She's desperate and earnest and passionate. She wants them to really understand the mindset that caused her to do what she did. This leads to her desperate outburst of, I gave you this, I gave you everything. But it is to no avail. Her friends back away from her, leaving her alone, cloaked in shadow. This is a poignant, cathartic moment. The amount of compassion and pathos this specific scene really evokes for Marcy is profound, and yet her friend's reaction is also understandable and honest. The person they've thought is nothing more than just a sweet, innocent person who'd never do anything wrong to them has turned out to be the person who trapped them in this world, and that is also devastating. Intellectually and morally, we can safely say that what Marcy did was wrong. Even if she was indeed right in saying that the three of them have better lives in Amphibia, than they do on Earth, and I believe she was right when she said that. It's just that no one has the right to trap their friends on another world without their consent. I feel a little silly even saying it like that. It's like reading Dostoevsky's Crime and Punishment and saying that, hey, it's wrong to go and kill the lady at the pawn shop. I mean, yes, that is true, you shouldn't do that, but that observation is kind of superficial and asinine. What is artistically interesting is watching people act against these moral paradigms for reasons that are both understandable and quite sympathetic. Even persuasive and compelling. Marcy isn't crazy. She just doesn't want to be miserable, she just doesn't want to be alone, and she doesn't want to lose her friends. And she honestly does believe the three of them have better lives here. From her perspective, her actions are not particularly weird or bizarre. They're done out of desperation, they're done out of a sense that nothing else is really possible. Leaving Amphibia and going back to Earth and living the life she yearn to escape from would probably be worse for her than having never come to Amphibia at all. It'd be worse because it would put her in a position of knowing that life doesn't have to be like this, knowing that she was this grand, important adventurer, and then being forced back into the role of this awkward, dorky middle school student. That would be devastating for anyone, but especially someone like Marcy, whose life pre-amphibia was so terrible to her. And of course, there's no objective standard for these things. We can't say, oh, if I were in Marcy's position, I wouldn't have reacted this way. It doesn't matter whether we think her life was particularly terrible. What matters is that she did, and we have to try and understand that, even though we can't excuse her actions. This is why it is so devastating when Marcy finally does die. It's unjust and it's cruel, but it doesn't seem gratuitous. It would have seemed gratuitous if it were Anne and Sasha. That would have seemed kind of cheap. But for Marcy, there is a logic here. It is just the logic of a cruel and unforgiving world. 
that wants to punish this kid for trying to escape her loneliness, albeit through extreme means. It's like Jean Valjean serving years in prison after stealing a loaf of bread. From the perspective of the state, there is a logic to it, but it is the logic of a world that does not care about individual human emotions or individual humans at all. It sees people as nothing but statistics. You do a crime, you get punished. It is true that she needed something to correct her overly idealistic, overly rosy view of Amphibia. Unlike her friends, who experienced at least moderate levels of suffering since arriving in Amphibia, Marcy has lived basically a perfect life. She needed her grandiose ideals punctured. But Amphibia punctures these ideals in a very cold and unforgiving way. This is not a mark against the show, for the record. Number one, I think they will revive her. The show is not going to be that cold and callous. It's just not in line with the show we have thus far known. But also, even if it did play by this more callous logic, that can make for very effective tragedy. I wouldn't say Lear, for example, in Shakespeare deserves the fate he gets, but it is absolutely a fate that arises directly from the consequences of his foolish actions. And the same is true of Marcy here. Even if Marcy is revived, which, as I've said multiple times in multiple places, I think she will be and she should be, both for personal selfish reasons and for artistic reasons, she won't be the same person she was before. She won't still have this happy-go-lucky, overly positive view of this world that does not take into account the dark side of this world, represented by Andreas. Her death matters because it is a fundamental rupture in the illusion that she has crafted for herself. Her sentimental fantasies do not at all survive contact with cruel, unsympathetic reality. If Marcy is revived, she will have to figure out who she really is and what her view of Amphibia should be. She will suffer an existential crisis like Sasha does, only hers will be harder to emerge from. It'll be much more profound and all-encompassing. It'll be fascinating, I can say that much, and I can't wait to see what will occur. So thank you all for watching. If you liked what you saw today, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Donate to my Patreon if you can and you want to see more videos like this. Keep watching Amphibia. Season 2B is especially strong. I think I will rewatch it time and time again. And thank you, the viewers, for watching so many of my Amphibia videos. It's been a real delight to have you along for the ride with me, and I hope you will still be there when I start talking about The Owl House Season 2, when that starts airing in June. But really, I can't express my appreciation vividly enough y'all. These last couple Amphibia videos have featured some of my all-time favorite writing I've done on animated shows, especially the one about the tragedy of Marcy. And I can't wait to see what comes next, so I hope you're all there with me. Anyway, tune in soon for my next analysis. It will be coming soon. Thank you all again. Adios, comrades.